Which of the following drugs is commonly associated with gingival hyperplasia or hypertrophy? So the what the answer will be nifedipine. So allopurinol is used for gout. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Which of the following best explains the role of age as a risk determinant for periodontitis? Okay. Okay. Now <clears throat> let me tell you what is risk determinants. See, uh, I cannot explain the entire risk chapter here. Okay. I'll just talk about the very basics of it. Risk determinants means it is already determined. It is already created. It is already made. Or the background characteristics. Okay. So, my ancestors have already got this. So, it is in my background. That is what is called as risk determinants or background characteristics. I cannot modify it. So, any factors which cannot be modified will come under risk determinants or background characteristics. Age. Can I modify my age? No. Sex. Gender. Sometimes socioeconomic status. Sometimes stress. Genetic factors like interleukin 1 polymorphism seen in aggressive periodontitis. So, these are all the factors which are determined, predetermined. You cannot modify it, nobody can modify it. So, the, all these factors will come under risk determinants. Risk factor is those things which can be modified smoking, diabetes. So, risk indicators is if this is present that can be present. So, these are all the indication, past signs, bleeding or probing, attachment loss. Okay. So, see, basically, when I cannot modify something, I am going to call that as non-modifiable. It's very simple. So, these are all the few factors which I cannot modify or it cannot be modified. Okay. So, these will come under risk determinant. So, it, coming back to the question, which of the following best explains the role of age? See, again I am telling you, age, the more the age, the prognosis is going to be good. Say for example, a 60 year old male patient come to you, coming to your clinic with a bone loss of 2 mm is much more, uh, you know, have a good prognostic value than a 30 year old guy who comes to your clinic with a 2 mm of bone loss. Why? Because even at 30 years, 30 years itself, he or she is having 2 mm of bone loss and this guy only at the age of 60 is having 2M of bone loss. So, age, increase in age, good prognosis, okay. Now, it, it is definitely a non-modifiable risk factor, okay. It is definitely a non-modifiable risk factor. And also, and also, if you see, it is not relevant to periodontal disease progression. This is absolute nonsense option. So, the correct option will be age acts as a non-modifiable risk factor. You cannot modify it. Okay. Coming to the next question. Merkel cells associated with the tactile sensory fun functions are most commonly found in which layer? Okay. What is Merkel cells? Merkel cells are basically mechanoreceptors. Okay. They are responsible for mild light touch. They will be predominantly found in palms, soles, more commonly in fingertips. Okay. So, they are associated with nerves. Okay, they are responsible for the sensory functions. Okay, so they are always associated with the nerve. There will be some neurite complex with the Merkel cells. Okay, so these kind of cells are predominantly found in stratum basi. Okay, going on to the next question. Which of the following subgingival microorganisms is most commonly associated with patients having type 2 diabetes? Okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> for this, uh, let me show you the complexes by Sokransky. This was given by Sokransky in the year 1988. Sorry, 1998. So, given by Sokransky in the year 1998. So, uh, see, this complex m might look, you know, a bit difficult. But you, you understand the concept behind those complexes will be extremely easy. Okay. So, the most, most notorious guy is this one. They are very, very pathogenic bacteria. 
रेड कॉम्प्लेक्स इज एक्सट्रीमली पैथोजेनिक बैक्टीरिया ओके सो वॉट दे आर गोइंग टू डू दे आर द वन दैट इज गोइंग टू कॉज अटैचमेंट लॉस बोन लॉस ब्लीडिंग ऑन प्रोबिंग ऑल दीज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर कॉज बाई दिस रेड कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गेनिजम एक्सट्रीमली पेरियोपैथोजेनिक पॉर्फर जेवेलस टेंड्रेला फोसिथिया ट्रिपोनिमा डेंटिकल दिस आर ऑल वेरी वेरी पेरियोपैथोजेनिक बैक्टीरिया ओके सो मूविंग ऑन टू द ऑरेंज कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑरेंज कॉम्प्लेक्स इफ यू सी इट हेल्प्स इन प्लॉक मेच्यूरेशन एंड इट फॉर्म्स अ सूटेबल एनवायरनमेंट फॉर द रेड कॉम्प्लेक्स ओके सो द ग्रीन कॉम्प्लेक्स विल बी द इंटरमीडिएट कॉलोनाइजर्स ओके एंड आल्सो द ऑरेंज कॉम्प्लेक्सेस दे और सी सॉरी द येलो कॉम्प्लेक्सेस and the purple complexes they are going to be the initial colonizers and the blue complexes were it was introduced recently it is a normal flora okay so when we talk about the complexes the periodontal microorganisms microbiology i'll tell you in depth about what happens with each complexes and uh, what will happen when a particular bacteria enters the body and how does the body responds to it okay fine now so you, you see the sokrans ki does not include agricatibacter actinomycetum comitans a is not included here okay so now so which are the following subgenual microorganisms is most commonly associated with type 2 diabetes mellitus without any second thought i'll go with porphyromonas ingevelis porphyromonas ingevelis belongs to red complex microorganisms fine now moving on to the next question it's a very straight forward question okay so a 17 year old patient female patient came to the clinic with minimal plaque no systemic disease deep periodontal pockets vertical bone loss localized to first molars and incisors a mirror image type of pattern so with this we can i can close my eyes and tell that it is an aggressive periodontitis but what is the confusion it is generalized or localized okay now Oh, I'll tell you the primary criteria for aggressive periodontitis. Very, very, very important. Okay, it was given by Lang in the year nineteen ninety-nine. So the primary criteria for aggressive, be it localized or generalized, the primary criteria will be rapid rate of attachment loss. Rapid rate of attachment loss. Absence of systemic diseases and there will be presence of familial aggregation so these are all the must primary features of aggressive periodontitis see the patient has no systemic disease deeper pockets a 17 year old girl with a deeper pockets rapid rate of attachment loss no systemic diseases okay fine now what is the difference between a localized and generalized aggressive periodontitis what is the difference between a localized and a generalized aggressive periodontitis see a localized aggressive periodontitis patients the onset will be predominantly circumpubertal okay so these patients will have two teeth involved of which one should be the first molar and these patients three teeth should be involved other than the first molar and incisors and one of the most classic feature of a localized aggressive periodontitis is there is going to be mirror image type of bone loss heart shape bone loss mirror image type of bone loss so when i take an opg there will be a heart shape bone loss extending from the distal aspect of second premolar to the mesial aspect of second molar distal aspect of second premolar to the mesial aspect of second molar i see an arc shape bone loss bilaterally that is one of the classical features of localized aggressive periodontitis okay so now moving on to the question i see only localized involvement to first molars and incisors so i'll go with 
localized aggressive prodontitis. So in case if this patient or if this question was framed in such a way that four or five teeth are involved and there is vertical bone loss and all the other features are same, then I'll go with generalized aggressive prodontitis. Might be the age might be increased to 25 or 30 years. Okay, fine. Now, we go to the next question. A six-year-old boy presents with chief complaints of inflammation, bleeding and mobility of the primary tooth and radiograph showed generalized vertical bone loss, block accumulation is minimal, the child has no systemic diseases. See, these features are also points towards aggressive periodontitis, right? See, there is uh, generalized vertical bone loss, block is minimal and child has no systemic diseases and you know there is inflammation, bleeding and probing, all these features points towards aggressive periodontitis. So this question will be very, very difficult if there was an option like if I remove this option and I had this uh, as generalized aggressive periodontitis. Imagine if there is an option like generalized aggressive periodontitis, prepubertal, chronic gingivitis and hypopospatesia. Okay, this question is going to be very, very difficult. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out very important two keywords in this question. So I will rule out the rule out the keywords pertaining to aggressive periodontitis and prepubertal periodontitis. Obviously, there it is not going to be gingivitis and hypophosphatasia. Okay, so my fight is going to be between prepubertal and generalized aggressive periodontitis. So, in case of a generalized aggressive periodontitis, I am not going to have any teeth of primary dentition. Very important keyword, primary teeth, no. Six-year-old boy, no. Okay, so a young patient, primary dentition, okay, six-year-old boy. So the prepubertal periodontitis is basically, it affects Im immediately after the eruption of primary tooth. Okay, prepubertal periodontitis will have abnormal neutrophil values and monocyte values. Generalized prepubertal periodontitis even will have otitis media. So these are all the few features which distinguishes the prepubertal and aggressive. So you don't see an aggressive periodontitis in a primary dentition, in a six-year-old guy. In a prepubertal, obviously it is going to start in primary dentition, six-year-old per abnormal neutrophil monocyte counts. So this question, if this option was given, it would have been very difficult. But without this option, I can easily come to a conclusion of prepubertal periodontitis. Okay. See, again, I'm telling you, you can see more and more and more of case scenario questions. The thing is because, you know, the students writing the need examinations are extremely smart. Okay. So, they may they made sure that if, I, if they give you one-liners, you're going to crack it. So, they are giving you more case scenarios. So, it'll be a little bit more time consuming. So, you find it a bit difficult. Okay. So, try solving case scenarios. We have given a lot of case scenarios in the app. You try, you, when, only when you get used to case scenarios, when you write mock tests with a lot of case scenarios, you'll get used to the case scenario format. Okay. So, now we go to the next question. Which of the following is the most common site of occurrence of brucheck crystals in the oral cavity? So, I'll tell you three to four crystals in the oral cavity, especially calculus. Okay. These are all the crystals of calculus. One is magnesium vitlocate, octacalcium phosphate, Bruchite crystals, hydroxyapatite crystals. So, bruchite crystals form only 9 percentage, whereas hydroxyapatite crystals form 58 percentage. And octacalcium phosphate forms 12 percentage and magnesium based locate forms 21 percentage of the entire crystals of the calculus. Okay. So, of this, if you see, the bruchite crystals is immature form and it is present in supragingival calculus. Whereas the uh, octacalcium phosphate is considered a precursor of hydroxyapatite. Okay. So, uh, the hydroxyapatite will be present in both supra and subgingival. Supra and subgingival calculus. So, calculus, if you see, the supragingival calculus will be predominantly seen in the lower lingual area. Why? Because, because of the presence of opening of salivary glands, especially submandibular salivary gland, Wharton's duct. And subgingival calculus will be predominantly seen in the interdental areas of upper second molars because of the opening of the parotid gland, stents and stuff. Okay. So, this is what the, uh, uh, you know, the overall framework of the questions 
as in NEET MDS 2025. And if at all I missed any questions, you can just add that in the comment section. So I'll just try to answer that question. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching the video. We'll meet in the next recall uh, subject. Thank you.